Hi everybody, it is Sunday evening again, um, the 7th of June, <laughs> who knew, so here we are again. Um, so I hope you're all keeping very well um, and that you are able to join me for this evening's demonstrations. Uh, hopefully a few of you guys will be able to come on fairly shortly. So tonight we're going to do something kind of, um, I suppose they're an important part of a little um, flower corsage. So we're going to be making some filler flowers and um little buds and kind of filler flowers so last week we set up a little challenge that hi patricia hi natalie hi gail how's everybody keeping hi sharon um so last week we kind of set up a little challenge that maybe for the month of june we might make some of the pieces so last week we were doing the um leaves and everything and tonight then we'll do as i say the the filler flowers um and get to make some of those so lots of nice easy ones i'm actually tonight i'm not going to use any cutters or veiners so that would be something nice as well if you're kind of a beginner on flowers and maybe you don't have any of the cutters and veiners and um, it's always nice to to do some hi uh, lee and elf and how are you keeping hi darla so maybe it's nice as well if you don't have any of the fill, the veiners and the cutters that we can um, use some of those without those. Just while people are kind of logging on and everything, I'll give you a look here to see. I've been making flowers as always. Um, so <laughs> what else am I ever doing? Um, this here is the flower that we did yesterday in the class. So this is the David Austin Rose that we had last night. We had our, our private class on the David Austin Rose. Lovely group of people as always um so oh my gosh the hellos are all jumping up hi everybody i better just say hi everybody south africa rio uh dublin sligo <laughs> i i turned it off there for a split second hi 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 so this is the david austin rose that we did in the private class last night now i know a few people have been messaging me and you've been asking that you couldn't make the class last night that's not a problem the classes that i'm the the likes of this class here and the passion flare and the other classes that I have, they're done as part of a private group. And um, so there is a small subscription for doing these. It's 25 euros um, and you can still join the group at any time. You can still ask all the questions and you can still make the flowers, obviously. And the full demonstrations are there. They're exclusive to the people in the private group. So if anybody does want this, because I'm aware that some people, you know, it was either maybe out of their time zone or whatever it is and that they want to join in. If you want to, absolutely, you're very welcome to to do that. So that's the one that we did last night. Um, I'll let you see it better in the light there in a second. My next private class that's coming up is a bit of a whopper. It's this one here. So this is the passion flower. One of my favourites to make. I've made this a few times. Um, so this is one of my favourites to make. And this is the next um, private class that's coming up on the 20th of June. So same thing again. You can absolutely enrol in that. And any of the private classes, they're there for the group in the private class, even after it's over. So that's just to let you know about those ones there. So as I say, tonight we are going to do, and everybody, you are so welcome along. The, the hellos have flashed up quicker than I could read them off. But I can see you from Ola, um, Clara. I can see you from Bristol, India, Norfolk, North Ants, Norfolk, um, Spain. You're from everywhere. You're very, very welcome along. Reedy in Holland. Lovely to see you all here. And I hope you're having a good week. I hope it's been a good week wherever you are. Um, so you're welcome to my little corner in, in Wicklow in the in uh, Ireland. So let's get started on this. As I say tonight, I'm not going to use any uh, cutters or veiners. So this will be something a little bit different and they'll all be quite simplified and nice, easy little um, uh, little filler flowers for you guys to make. So you're able to use them then in your bouquets and your sprays. So let me just, just drop this down here and we shall get cracking. So anyone, any news for me? Um, anything strange or wild or exciting? Let me just be certain that you're there, as we always do. So you should be able to see that a little bit better. Yep, there we go. Um, so, hello from Canada. Good morning, 5 a.m. in Sydney. Kanye, hello, you're very welcome. I hope you've got strong coffee. So let me show you here. Um, just be sure that I can all see. So yeah, as I was saying to you, you can see these in better light. This here is the um, David Austin Rose that we did last night in the private class. 
not sure where my center is i think i need to just pick you up a little small bit sorry guys just lift you up a little bit because this this uh, stand that i use it's very good but it just takes a small bit of adjusting sometimes so that's better okay so this here is the david austin rose that we did in the class last night um that one there and then my next one that's coming up which again this is a private class one of my favorites to make is the passion flower adore these absolutely adore these um so that's my next one coming up there's lots and lots and lots of detail in these ones here um and they're really beautiful to make so uh yeah linda okay so the news on the shop is we are gone into in ireland we're gone into the second phase of reopening technically i can open my shop tomorrow but i'm going to hold for an extra week so I reckon I've come this far. I'm just going to hold for one more week until the 15th and then I'm going to open up uh, the doors. But it will be on limited hours because obviously I've got to follow protocol. So it will be on limited hours, but at least the doors will be open. Linda, I know I, I can see I can't see my parents for another three weeks, uh, but it's getting closer. At least we're not as far away as we were in March. So let's get going on this here. Now, what I have done is I have done some um, some fillers here for it already. OK, so these are some of the ones that I'm going to show you how to make. Like I say, no cutters, no veiners. We're not going to use any tonight, just something for a little bit different for you. So these here are some of the ones that I've made. Really, really lovely, um, really lovely for simple bouquets. You can even use them on their own for little small sprays. You can do that if you want to. Um, and that's so. Linda, devastated, devastated. We will get there. We will get there. We've come this far. All of these little filler flowers. I'm going to show you how to make all these guys here. Um, I will go back through all your comments afterwards, guys, because they flashed up so quickly tonight. Um, so I just want to show you all these little guys that I'm going to make. Alrighty. Um, little buds, obviously all very important. Now last week you'll have seen my demonstration on the um on the leaves and everything. So hopefully a few of you got to make some leaves. I'll just leave those there. So they will we'll come back to those afterwards. These are all nice and dry, so we'll come back to those there afterwards. Um for it all, and we shall get started. Okie dokie. So basically the filler flowers a little bit kind of like the leaves. You can make these out of any colour icing that you want. So I've odds and ends of greens and yellows and I've reds, I've lilac, I've purple. So really whatever you want to use. And quite often I'll make filler flowers using, um, so if I've small bits and pieces of um if I've small bits and pieces of of paste left, you know, maybe after making some flowers or something like that, then you can use all of these. Really, you don't need a huge amount. Um, so what I use is I use I don't even need a rolling pin. Um, I'll use a ball tool. I'll use a foam pad. I will use a cutting wheel. Um, I will use this tool here that people quite often don't use. So this is your little star tool. One end will have five points on it. One end will have six. OK, so we can use those. Um, hi, Stephanie. Hi, Elfin. Um, let me see. What else do I use? You can use your cell pin. OK, so you can use obviously rolling pins come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. I have another little ditty one. That's only the thickness of like the refill of a pen. But it's it's gone walkabout on me or else it's tucked in underneath something on me. I'm not exactly sure. So it's really your basic, basic tools. That's what we're going to use this time around. Um, scissors, of course, fine point scissors. And that is most of what I wear, what I use, what I wear. Um, don't wear the tools. <laughs> I don't wear these bits and pieces. So that's based. So it's your basic, basic kit bag. OK, hi, Magda in Edinburgh. It's your basic kit bag. So let me start. I'll go on white, I think, for most of these, because probably it's a better color for you guys to see as well. Um, and I shall try and keep an eye on comments and questions or anything that you may well have. So some of you guys coming into um. Hopefully a little bit of um, 
hopefully a little bit of a lift up or a, what would you call it a, a phase one or phase two or whatever we're on so hopefully a few you guys are coming in off it or coming in next to it let's start on these ones here very easy pulled flower these are called just very very simple little flower to do um so all that we do and mostly for these flowers i will use about a 20 what have i got here a 28 gauge okay so you can use green or white whichever you want to use um i've got green to hand so let's use green and I would often use the, the make these on green stems and then you don't have so much taping up to do. Um, so it will make life a little bit easier. So all that I do is hello, Kate. Uh, hello, Susan. Hello, Rashika. How's everybody going? So normally for these guys here, I will cut the, the length of wire in about four or five thereabouts you don't need a turbo long and um, because nine times out of ten these guys are going to be put into like a little spray or a little um arrangement so you don't need it to be very long at all and um, they generally you'll only end up cutting off all the excess and wasting half your wire so don't go too crazy on the length of it what i tend to do then so i've got three there because these are a nice light wire i can bend down the hook on the three wires at the one time OK, someone shout out if I'm gone off camera. Hello, Sweden. So little hook on those. For most of these, I need a hook. So I'm just going to hook some of these because some of them I don't. So let's just hook a few of those guys and leave a few of them plain. All right. I've got my white paste um, then. This is all flour paste again, guys. This isn't uh, sugar paste. OK, so it's all flour paste. And I've got my edible glue. So, like I said to you, it's basic, basic tools and this will be, these are, these are something that you can kind of just potter away at, use up a little bit of leftover paste if you're finished flowers. Um, remember my lecture, this is your profit. So this is where you want to use up those little small bits of ditty bits of paste that you'd have. So like I say, we're going to start on this one here. All I'm using in the centre is the edible pearls. OK, so obviously you can buy these in literally any colour um, and they're the ones that I'm using in the centre. So excuse the rattles <laughs> as long as it doesn't go flying. Has anyone ever? Um, so has anybody ever knocked one of those tubs? Brigitte in Austria, reasonably back to normal. Fantastico. Yeah, we're on face masks. and um, Well, I've been wearing one all the time. I've never not worn one. Um, so... 28 gauge wire yep 28 gauge so roll it into a little ball and as you know I always kind of keep a little bit of the flour paste in my hand just in the crook of my finger and it keeps nice and warm and toasty there into a ball and into a cone what I want to do then is that you can cut this freehand if you want okay um so she is what am I you're an international celebrity, Grania. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, I'm only a very small country girl. So <laughs> so I wouldn't consider myself an international. But thanks very much. I'll take it, sure. OK, so I'm taking my star tool. Now you can, on these tools here, one has six points. One has five points. I prefer the one with five because I prefer odd number petals. So you can cut this freehand if you want, but I have crooked eyes. OK, um, so I always end up with one big fat petal and the others are slim or kind of half matching. So dip that down in, take your scissors and just cut on each little um, join. I'm going almost down to the bottom. So when we open this out, OK, now you can leave it kind of like this. This actually makes sort of a periwinkle um, kind of shape if you want to do that. Um, OK, yeah, Shelley, I'm, I'm thrilled that you think I'm international. <laughs> so you pinch just a little small bit. Just pinch. Again, you can leave it like that if you want to do that. You can point the petals a small bit. So I'm just between my thumb and finger point down I've been making peonies today I'm doing the most fantastic summer camp sugar flower summer camp uh, and it started this week holy moly I'm gone blind rolling out peony petals I might give you now look at the one I've been making later on so we've pinched a little small bit they're quite 
they're not, they're fleshy so these are not these are not competition flowers but these will work brilliantly for your um commercial cakes okay so i always always say there is a difference between your commercial cakes and your um competition cakes because your competitions are botanically correct and they're to the point dipping my hook into a uh, glue little trick for you instead of wiping off the excess on my hand which is what I normally do I actually just tap the hook in the flower in the center of the flower oh you have a crooked eye too Lee good <laughs> I have a crooked eye so that's why I mark I pull the hook down I twiddle along on the back so that it's nicely secured to the wire excuse me secured to the wire why did i why did i tap the glue into the center because now when i want to put in my pearl i don't have to start going for my my glue brush the glue's already there so i just pop the glue in okay and just put that into a bit of oasis that i forgot to get so let's just pop it in here so we just leave her in there all right so let me just do another one of those guys. So we take a little small piece of paste. It's quite humid here actually this week on us. Um, so I'm just going to put that back in. So small little piece of paste. I'll show you the peony. I'll show you the peony at the end. Someone remind me. So small little piece of paste into a teardrop. We take our star tool, which is one of the ones that's never used out of the toolbox. huh? Okay. What's smarty pants? Well, what's smarty pants, Elfin? <laughs> the the uh, glue. So, cut down almost to the end. You don't want to cut right the way through. With your thumb and finger then press, press each petal out so they start to spread. You can make these out bigger if you want to do that. You can point them, just pinch into a hook and press down flat and you get more like a daisy kind of shape. Hi, Selena. Hi, Amy. I hope she's with you tonight. Hope she didn't abandon you there tonight, Selena. Cheek of her. Cheek of her last night. Okay, so just pinch, pinch, pinch into a point. Take your hook, a uh, wire with hook into your glue and just tap it into the center. So like I say, it, it just saves another job. You know, if cut, it doesn't cut a corner, but it saves a job. Pull that down and twist it in. Okay, so you get that nice and tidy and then take your little pearl and pop that in. Now, let's say you were doing this for a um, um, christening cake, for, you know, for if you were doing it for or a reveal cake, um, which are huge at the moment. You could change your pearls to pink or blue if you wanted to do that. Obviously, you can change that. Um, I've done some lately for a... Um, uh, golden wedding anniversary so I've changed them to gold pearls so change it about to whatever that you need to do and I just dicky those then to a little small um, dust you can't really paint this um, hi Ashling. you can't really paint these pearls because they're glazed they don't really paint up terribly well so that's the first one uh, what I could have done actually is I can take my Dresden tool and I can just mark a little small little vein there if you want to so you can kind of detail them up a small little bit if you want to do that so you can go whoops you can go plain or you can go feigned whichever way you like okay hi Varsha Varsha you're not late you're not late at all at all okay so that's the first one there then this one here is, sorry, I beg your pardon, that first one was these guys here. So I've put the veins in these yellow ones. These ones here then, kind of, kind of pretty much the same. So we take, I'm taking a bigger piece of paste this time. Okay. And into a ball. So you will always roll it into a ball. Why do you do that? Because you want to get rid of any creases that might be in the paste. Into a cone. Okay. And then we mark it again. So the steps so far are the same, except that I've got a slightly bigger ball of paste and I have um, doing the same thing, cutting it down. OK, pinching out each petal. Susan, I shall. I shall pop on the peony now. It's, it's a little bit not finished, but 
because I'm in the middle of doing the leaves and the buds and everything, but it will get there. So we're the same steps there so far into our glue. This glue is going to end up going everywhere. So better move it over. Pop in our little bit of glue in the center. OK. Hi, Darren, how are you keeping? Down she comes and glue. Now, this is where it changes. So we tighten that onto the end so you will always tidy the ends of it back, OK? Now what we do is we tip it upside down onto our foam pad and we take our ball tool, depending on the size of the petal, and I press behind each petal, OK? So just press behind and you see how it's thinning it out a little small bit? This done in purple is exactly like your little periwinkle flowers. You know the ones that kind of grow a bit wild? Well, they do in Ireland. Okay. So you see how that gives you like a little umbrella, sort of? And it rounds up on the top. So what you can do is you can go back in now with your uh, Dresden tool and you can mark each little petal. No rest for the wicked, sure, Susan. I'd only get it up to divilment if I was... Sitting still. OK, and then we can pop in our pearl that way. So it gives you this little like a, a kind of a hooded petal. So you see it from behind. OK, and you see how it gives you that little umbrella sort of finish on it. OK, you don't have to do the pearls. You can if you want as well. Um, uh, you can, if you want, put a, a spot of royal icing into that if you want to do it. But I just find the pearls, they're done, they're finished. Uh, and I love that. I really love these ones, actually. So I do. Um, do I sell the metal ball tools? Yeah, I do indeed, yeah, Ashling. Yep, they're on the website. They're on the website and the wires and the tape and whatever other bits. So what I would do for this one here is that now I'm going to come back and dust all these in the end. So I've just on this one here, I've two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's eleven. And it just makes a nice ditty little spray for um if you've a, a simple like an anniversary cake or you've something like that, then you can, it just makes a nice handy little spray for them there. OK, these ones here then. All right. Are again, small bit of paste. So I'm going to make the fillers flirt first and then I will come back. I'll come on and I'll make some buds. All right. And um, both equally as, as important. And it's nice when you're doing um, when you're doing a spray. So, for example, you might just have one feature flower um, and you might have lots then of little buds and little leaves around it. Uh, and it just changes all the textures and the the. Um, uh, t different kind of shapes and textures and everything. All right. So round into a ball. Mark it again. Now, some people put the wires in first. I don't. OK, so mark that again. What I'm doing when I roll it is I'm kind of pressing it just against the, the little fins of the star tip. All right. So I'm pressing that against it so I get those decent marks. We cut down. So just cut down on each one. All right. Hello, Wales. Hi, Julie. Hello, Renee from South African, the South African in the Netherlands. <laughs> I've pinched out each one. Uh, size of the pearls. They are doo -doo -doo, four mil, I'd say, Lee. They're the larger ones and um, the the, the uh, non pearls. So I have pinched out there. This time what I'm doing is I'm taking the ball to sorry, put in my wire first. OK. Pop that in, a little bit of glue in there, place this in, tidy that. OK, so I'm doing a longer, slightly longer stem on this. It's up to you what to do. This time what I'm doing then is that I'm taking my ball tool and I'm ball tooling the top of the flower. OK. So this is going to cup our flower in. This would work for um, like if you wanted to make a sort of buttercups or freesias and um, this sort of technique works again, works for that there. So this cups it in. So the last time we ball tooled on the back of the petal and it cups it out. So a very simple change of direction. Just it gives you a different, uh, different moving, a different movement on the petal. Pop in your pearl then and always you can you can mark the petals with that little vein if you want to do that um, and, and you can go back. You can kind of pull those petals out a little bit and it will lengthen them a small bit as well. So you can do that. 
I'm glad to get to do this again because this is the demo um, that I did about, I think, on week six. That's when I did it. Um, so that was uh, 10 weeks ago. Holy moly. This is my 16th, <laughs> 17th demo, I think, tonight. Uh, so this is the demo that went away that my internet collapsed on me that night. And me and Vodafone fell out. We met up friends since. OK, so just cut them out and you can stretch those a little small bit. Now, there's nothing to say you could do um, uh, big ones and little ones. So what you could do is you could make some smaller ones of this and then some buds and you could make a freesia type um, thing. So what I'll do is I'll just make another one of those quickly and then you'll be able to see a sort of a freesia stem on the end of it. Um, hi, Eileen, how's it going? Eileen, you're not late at all. None of you are late. You're here. That's what. That's the main thing. So let's just make another small little one of those. Little ball, little cone. Mark it with my star so it's pretty much the same. But from here then it changes. So it changes from do you want to do pointed petals? Do you want to do uh, rounded petals? Do you want to ball tool them on the back or on the front of the petal? And that will all change the flower. And actually you could do a bouquet with all of the techniques but they would all um they'd all look different do you know what i mean each flower would look different you make them in different uh, colors like i say it's just the techniques so we're just rounding that a little bit because i don't want it to be too square round that a little bit round that a little bit okay pop in our hook you can put the hook in now or you can put it in after i'm so used to wiping the excess off in my hand i forget pop your hook in OK, so for anyone missed that, I'm dabbing the, the glue into the centre instead of wiping off the excess on my hand. I'm just dabbing the glue into the centre of it. So then it's already there for my um, pearl. Then I take my ball tool and I just press down, press down. So what I'll do this technically, this would work as a free ship because actually what you could do is you could pop in a couple of stamens into the center, tape on a couple of stamens onto the hook um, and then you would have a freesia kind of style. So then close that a little bit. Pop your pearl in. OK, so you've got a big and a little. So if you look at those guys. These are all exactly the same technique, but like what I was saying to you, this one here is just kept small, no ball tooling on it. Uh, and we've just marked in the vein, just pinch and flatten our petals. This one here, we've ball tooled on the back of the petals, so you get this umbrella kind of effect. And this one here, we've ball tooled on the front of the petal, so you get it more cupped. So hopefully that'll work. Would that make forget-me-nots? Yeah, it would actually, um, Swoozle, it would. Yeah, it would make... So you could use probably these guys here in blue for the forget-me-nots. And then you could put in a little... If you had a yellow pearl, I don't know if they come in yellow, do they? Um, so they, they might they might uh, work as forget-me-nots. Absolutely, they sure would. Uh, all right. That's those ones there. This one here, this is one that I've I've kind of come up with um, lately and it's like a little bell kind of flower. You can make this in any colour. I'll actually switch up. I'll do this in the lime green. Karina Leonard, getting a few minutes to yourself. My first demo. Karina, you have homework to do. <laughs> so let me show you the bell flowers. So I just want a wee small piece of paste there. Um, there's Maria Weldon. How's all in Kashina? Hope they're all well down there. Auntie Maria. <laughs> so taking a little bit of lime green this time. And because I have it uh, just a small bit bigger paste, I might just use a slightly heavier wire. Um, so obviously, if you are doing if you're doing heavier, um, bigger flowers, then you want to just use a slightly heavier wire. So we're going to. We're going to roll this into a cone again and we are going to um and there now just somebody so dip this into the wire pop this in this time I'm popping it in onto the pointed end okay so we just swizzle that down okay and then what we do is we take our um pointed end of the of the tool rolling tool and I start to open this out 
So I'm just rocking it around in a circle. Just start to open this out a little small bit. Okay. And I open it, open it, open it. I place it down onto the foam pad and I roll the 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 rolling pin is just inside it here okay so i want to be careful i don't want to hit that wire too much so i keep on rolling it to thin it out get it nice and thin now that would work perfect as it is you could leave it like this if you want so we just keep on rolling it out keep on thinning it out okay so we get this nice and thin and a nice, just a nice ball tool uh, there on it. You can leave it like that if you want. And what you can do is just let me pop down a little bit of glue. What I like to do is I like to pop in the star nozzle just to get, or the star nozzle, the star cutter. So I just get those little markings on it there. Alrighty. And then what I do is I pinch and I pull out and I pinch. Now, I'm not pinching it totally together, but can you see then what happens? So it just creates this interesting little star. So you see, right before your eyes. And then let's just pop you in there. So you just get this. It's just an interesting shape. It's not any particular flower really or anything like that but it just creates an interesting shape and then you can dust down into it if you want to do that so it's a little bit bigger a little bit fuller but sometimes if you want particularly if you're doing kind of commercial um cakes and flowers you want quick fillers and you want fillers that will fill up space kind of quick enough do you know what i mean um so you don't want to be spending all day every day guys is there a glow on the um paste i'm just looking on my screen it looks like there's shine on it I'm not too sure okay so that's quite a nice one the color that I've used here is I've used the white flower paste and the lemon and lime gel color uh, to color up the paste so really lovely color so that makes your like a little bell sort of flower and I've done some in white with pink so again if you were doing a sort of a reveal you could do that and I've done some with white pearls and dusted them up pink but it's a, just a nice interesting little one or as I say, you can leave it um, just plain if you want to do that as well. All right. Um, that is those there. Then obviously, if you wanted to do them just as um, a round bell, you can do that as well. So just show you that one there again, because I don't know if it's hard for you to see. Hopefully it's not. So roll that into a ball. And into a cone. And then taking our wire and this time I'm using maybe like a 24 G wire. I tend to fix them onto the wire before I start to shape them for the simple reason that if you shape them and then you're trying to get on the wire, you can often distort the shape a little bit as well. OK, so we've taken that there. We're taking our cell pin. We're popping these in. And I'm just, I often just press it, but I'm turning it so the, the cell pin is staying steady, but I just turn it against it. So you start to thin that out. We insert then the rounded end of the cell pin and we just open it out. So just rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth. OK, so just keep coming and you're starting to gradually open that out. OK, you could use a ball tool for this if you wanted to. Um. It is a good fantasy, uh, Vashana. Yeah, it's it's a good little fantasy flower, this. Um, it would work for all sorts. You can leave it like the bell even. I like it like the little bell shaped. And just keep working that. And I'm, I'm only rocking over and back. That's all I'm doing with it. So just over and back, over and back until it's nice and thin at the edges. OK, so this is why I make it just a bit bigger. Um, that is four centimetres there, thereabouts. All right but whatever size you use. So you can leave it like that if you want, or you can just pinch the sides like what we did. So let's just pop in a little pearl into the center. Pop that in there. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so I'm pinch. Two, three, four, five. Odd, go in odds, go five, don't go four. If you go four, you end up square, obviously. Yeah. You can pop in stamens, absolutely. You could tread in some stamens, no problem at all. And I shall, if I have a stamen handy. Um, oh, I do. 
there's a stamen there so we'll make one with a little stamen so it's just a really nice as you say um Vashina, just a really nice little fantasy flower and you can do that no problem um let me just let me just show you this one so i just have a couple of little stamens here these are actually ones that I'm making a peony, I was saying there, and these are just little stamens that are uh, pulled out of the center when I was trying to tape it up. So let me just take two stamens. These are the little long tip stamens. Piece of wire, no hook, because they're quite fine. And let's just tape the stamens on to the wire. Okay, so you can you can create whatever colors, whatever sort of stamens that you want to use on it. And then what we can do is let's go with white. So the bell shape could be Calmia. So where is Calmia from, Wendy? What sort of flower? Calico bush. I must look that up. I love I love um, all these kind of unusual. I love rare flowers. I haunt uh, Pinterest for all these rare, flower rare flowers, but I never know the names of them. Half the flowers I make, I've never seen. I just uh, go Google's, uh, Google on it. Into a cone. And let's just make one here. So we'll make this one with the stamens. Um, and this would work for your freesias again. Although, very kind uh, friend of mine, she goes out, she sent me pictures of uh, Eileen, it was you, wasn't it? Pictures of the frangipans last year. Send me pictures when you're on holidays of the flowers. I love to see them. So, pinch this down so that the petals are flattened then again. So, Ruma, the gum paste, uh, this is my own brand of flower paste. Um, so, I don't give out the recipe, obviously, because it's my own brand. Um, but it is a, my own brand that I make here and it's available to order. Um, the recipe is secret, secret. So, I'm just ball tooling the front of these guys again. And this will work for your little freesias um, also. Okay. In with our... Uh, now, what I need to do is because I have the stamens already on the wire, I just want to pop the glue down into the center. OK, and then tread my stamens from the top down. This so that you don't see the green tape anymore. So just do it until it's disappeared and you get those little stamens. Then it's nice when they're pokey out like that, like freesias would be. Um, so you can. You can leave them sticking out and obviously they can be in any color. That's just what I have to hand. You can paint these. Um, the ones for um, the ones that I have, a lot, most of the ones at least that I have on the website, they are a dull. Okay, so they're not pearl, they're not shiny. So you can paint them if you just take your dust, your powder dusts um, and then just mix it with an isopropyl alcohol or your lemon extract and you can paint it up so you can change all the color of them, obviously. All right, so that's those ones there with the stamens. Then let's move on to some buds. So that gives you just a range of just the different sized um, flowers. So they're all pinched, but then you decide, do you want to vein them? Do you want to ball them on the front or on the back of the flower? Do you want to add in stamens? You can add in your pearls. This one here, the pinched balloon, balloon kind of flower, you can put in your pearl or you can leave it round or square, whatever way you want to do it. And any of them then, once they're done in little bunches, they're brilliant little fillers, really good little fillers. So let's make a few buds then. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of the time the buds I do in the um, lime green or dark greens because buds mostly. Um, oh, Wendy. So I looked that up. It's C plus make a. OK, I'll have a look for that, Brigitte, and um, I'll have a look for that flower. Thank you. I'll look for that after. Calibracolia Million Bells. OK, new one for me to try. So normally with buds and everything, I make them with the fresh green paste because they will generally be in a fresh green colour. Um, so normally this is what I do. So let's make some little buds. Um, and I have, again, I have some here already done for you guys. So these are all just simple. There's another little pulled one with different colored stamens in it. Um, and the little bell shaped, I've done purple. So they just have a gold ball in them. Um, so we're going to just make up some little buds here. Lots of different ones and the gum nuts. Alrighty. 
So lots and lots of different ones. I better not whack that peony now I'm after spending two days making it. So let's start with your basic bud, which is your little teardrop shape. Into a ball. Hello Vancouver, hello Abu Dhabi. Into a point. You can hook the wire or not. I generally do hook it. And by hooking the wire, it'll actually go in a lot better into your paste because if you push it in and give it a little turn, it grasps the paste and it will pull it around. You want to just tidy that then at the bottom. Make sure your point is, is kept. Okay. Hello, North Yorkshire and Vancouver. I hope everybody's well. hope you're all safe. It's been a... a Crazy, crazy week, huh? So, uh, bud on here. I'm taking then my wheel or you could use your Dresden tool or you could use a scalpel, whatever you want to do. So I'm lying the bud just against my petal and just with the mark and wheel, I'm just going up along three times. One, two and a third time. And that is your basic, basic bud. So you get the little markings on it. So very basic little bud. You can make them smaller. You can make them in any colour that you want. Um, it's not a problem. You can do that. Good morning, New Zealand. My pleasure for sharing. And guys, thanks for all the messages I've been getting for the last few weeks. Um, I kind of... I didn't realise, I suppose, when I started this, uh, Grania, one of our fantastic cakers here in Ireland... Um, she asked, I've gone in upside down on that, but that's fine. We'll fix that. Uh, she asked, would somebody do some demos? So I said, I do dems, not thinking it would go for this long and certainly not thinking I would get the reaction that I'm getting. So I have to say, while you guys are thanking me for doing it, I am extremely humbled that you guys come here every week and we um, we join in all this together. It's it's a privilege to do it for you. It really is. So I placed the cone on point side down. OK, so that leaves us with a little ball of paste on the top. You can leave it as it is. There's no right or wrong on these. You, what you want is when you're doing these for um, a flower arrangement is you want to create texture and you want to create different shapes and you want to create uh, different finishes, kind of. Do you know what I mean on it? So you could leave that like that and you could tape a few of them together. Or what you could do is you could take back your star tool don't turn it when you put the star tool in don't turn it like the star tool is steady but I'm just pressing against it nice and lightly that now gives you that little shape like little berries this will work in red paste um for for um uh, rose hip kind of thing uh, or you know the wild berries that that grow in the ditches do you guys understand ditches um someone laughed at me last week because said what's a ditch <laughs> In the wilds, guys, in the wilds. So little berries do this in red. Uh, and you've got and shorten the tail of it here so you can take off a bit of that. And in red, then it makes like the little hip. And what you would do then is if this was made in red, you'd dust in there in the brown. So it looks more kind of berry like. All right. So through an accident, you often... Um, do those guys there. Let me show you. Yeah, so that's just that little marked one there. Let me show you. Let me do it in red, actually, because it'll make more sense. So just let me grab a little bit of red paste. <clears throat> I have more pots of paste here in different colours. <laughs> I have because I have so many projects going on at the moment. Um, and I had a... Uh, I had six at one stage this week. I had six demonstrations lined up and two classes lined up. Um, two classes I was taking and one I was teaching. Three classes. I'm all choked up. Grania, this is actually your fault. Guys, that Grania Freeman girl, that's her. It's all her fault that this has all happened. <laughs> Thank you again. A million. So let me <clears throat> show you on the red. OK, if you're using red paste, so this is my red flower paste. If you're using red paste and sometimes it's a kind of a, a pinky red, but you want it burgundy red. Um, so what you want to do is make your berry in red, but then over dust it in maybe your burgundies or a richer red, whatever you want to do. So what you can do on these guys is we've just done a ball of paste. I'm treading the wire down from the top down. Now, normally I would pull this all the way through, but let's just do that much. Whoop, sticky hands. We're humid here today. So you see how I haven't gone the whole way through? And that creates the little 
a little belly button in the berry and that will work for your little um, kind of wild berries as well. Just leave it poking through that little small bit and it's a little belly button. Thanks, Grania. There you go, Grania. <laughs> so it's all her fault. You can also do, I'm just going to do the little one to show you the star. So in a, a hook there in it is, or a point on the end of it. Again, little hook. Normally, as I say a hook now, my hands are gone a little bit warm, so I'm not going to put on glue there. Just between my thumb and, thumb and finger, I'm just twiddling that there so that it sits nicely. And then what we'll do is we'll take our star nozzle. You don't want to go in really, really deep into it. And that then take off any excess a little bit too much on there. So. So there's a red berry, but we've got two different finishes. So hopefully you can see those guys and um, just depends. Again, it's different texture, different finish. Often what I would do with those berries there is I would um, make these and put them in clusters of maybe four or five or little branches. So when I tape them together, I tape down about an inch down from the top and let them just hang as they would in bunches on the on the bushes. And um, so you can create different finishes on it. Um, so you have ditches in New Zealand. Everyone's probably saying, what does she mean ditches? Of course we have ditches. I know. So let me show you how to make gum nuts. These ones here. Okay. Really, really lovely um, little filler again. I take a dark green usually for these guys. Okay. So have you these lives on your page? I have so much to catch up on. Karen, all of them. If you're on my page, guys, um, go to the videos. Don't do it now. Stick with me. Uh, go to the videos and all of the demonstrations that I've done are on the videos. Or you click on my YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube. And there are some extra little videos going up on there. Um, and I will be putting extra up in the coming weeks. Um, so, yeah, everything is there for you guys. And then the classes are the private classes. They're separate again. They're a, a small fee on those ones because they are they're fairly intense. Some of the girls that's here was on last night. We ran for two and a half hours. I tend to yap a bit. What was I making? Gum nuts. Right. So I know it's not like me, but I do. You might be surprised to hear that I can yap a little bit of glue on the wire. Place that into the pointed end of the cone and we'll twiddle this down. OK. More than welcome, Karen. Pleasure. <clears throat> so twiddle that down long. Take off. Maybe there's a little bit too much on this. You don't want them to be big, bulky um, buds either. You know, you want them to be kind of dainty, dainty like myself. Right. So you have a little ball tool on the top. What we do then is we will take our Dresden tool. So we're taking the pointed, the sharp end of it. All right. It's easy to make life uh, lilac. Lilac is simple. Lilac is simple. So what we do is we take the pointed end of the ball tool. We stick it into the paste and we pull it out five times. One, two, three, four, five. So what that does is it gives you this texture down in it. Down there. And when we come to dust and then we'll pop in a little bit of color there. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> hi, Maria. Um, I'm here. I'm here. OK, so five times. So you get that little texture on it. Let me show you that one again. So this one, these gum nuts, I would do them in like f uh, bunches of four or five or whatever it is as well. All right. So a wee bit of paste around. And I would love, guys, if you, as I was saying, if you go onto the YouTube and subscribe on it, I'd love, love, love for you to subscribe onto it because um, I will be posting up some more videos on there as things return to normal. Um, things will change a little bit and I'll be posting up more videos there that I get to record as well. So we're just twiddling that around. Hold it between your thumb and forefinger. We're taking the pointed end of the Dresden. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And you get this little tear kind of. 
All right. So a little small tear in it and you get this spiky end. This technique will also work for blueberries. So if you obviously have purple paste, a round ball of uh, sugar pa uh, flour paste onto your wire and then just at the very top, you pull out those five little pulls that will give you um, like a blueberry sort of effect on it. All right. Linda, love the way you talk. <laughs> You're already subscribed. Thank you. <laughs> I always think I have such a culty accent. <laughs> I don't like my own voice. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just do a little small bud then with these again. And what I do here is into glue. In here, you can leave round balls on the wire if you want to do that and just bunch a few of them together. We're going to just taper this down and we'll just make a little point on the end of that. So... Different shapes, different textures. Kind of just play with it a little small bit. I have a bit of a crease in that now. That'll annoy me. A little bit of there. Tidy that in. So you can just different shapes. You don't need to mark it. You can if you want, but you don't need to. Let's hide the little crease that's in that. And you get a little sort of teardrop. Alrighty. Hello, Michelle Ward. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Then I want to show you um, the little leaves. I know I've showed you them before. <clears throat> These little ones here. Um, just a very, very simple little leaf that you can make as well. So let's just get rid of that one. And I need the old faithful acrylic square. This is what I use. Okay. I'm always uh, I'm a bit of a magpie watching for little bits of lint and everything on my work surface. <laughs> I, I'm, you're always watching for things like that because, as I say, I was doing peonies earlier, so I was obviously cut a wire. I had a little slip of a wire there. Do I make my own glue? I do. So I make my own glue, my own flower paste, my own pollen, um, my own... Cake toppers, I make, make loads and loads like that. So let's just make a couple of these small little um, leaves here. And I just want to get an extra wire. There's Scrawny Boland and Mr. Smith. How are you all keeping? So, small tiny bit of paste. Okay, size of a petit pois or a pea into a point. Nice and pointed. Okay, get this nice and pointed there. We want to insert our wire in, no hook. So sometimes you'll see I'm using a hook, sometimes I'm not. It kind of depends on what um, um, size bud that I'm doing. Okay, so press that down a little bit flat. Then what I want to do is I want to just a little bit of corn flour there. There's Smart and Tempany down to Tullamore. Press down, so I'm place, placing the acrylic square on top and I'm pressing that down around and then lift that off. Let me take, nobody saw that, did they? The wire nearly coming through. Take that off and pinch that through. So no ball tool or anything and just creates a very simple little leaf for you. All right, Darren, you can, but will you remind me? Because um, I, may I may forget, but of course you can. Around a ball into a point make it nice and pointed and the, you can make these nice and long and slender as well and that will give you a, a really good effect on it too pop in your wire just secure that on and then it's probably enough corn flour on the table down with the acrylic square press it down now don't don't press it down really hard it's sugar it's not concrete okay um if i've taught you and i've taught you it's sugar not concrete so you could also um, press that in between a leaf vein or if you wanted to do that. Um, I don't have one to hand. Oh, be Janie, I do. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> I have my favourite one. So you can vein these if you want. This here is the Purple Swedish Ivy Veiner, um, which is Sugar Delights, and I adore this. Absolutely adored. You'll be sick of me using this one, but I love it. It's just the one that I have to hand. So you can leave it plain or you can press it into um, a veiner if you want. And you get like a vein then on it. And they're very, very quick little um, leaves just to make. Okay. 
Let me just pop that in. Karina, yeah, uh, very quick. Uh, Karina, I know it does a lot of cakes and that, so uh, very quick, good commercial leaf these guys are. Okay, in with your wire again. And a little bit of glue. And like I say, you can make these nice and slender and more pointed if you want, or you can keep them more rounded. So we just pop on. You will always need a small bit of corn flour just with the acrylic because it tends to stick otherwise. Okay, take it off into your veiner. And this is, says the purple Swedish ivy, which is stunning, stunning. Must do some private classes. I mean, yes, no problem. There are five I think I have up on the moment and I'm working on the next one. Okay, so you get a very simple little leaf. You can ball tool the edges if you want to do that as well. Or what you could do is you can just with your Dresden, just pull out the edges so you get that little ruffled and it thins the edges a little bit. So you can do that as well. Alrighty. So Karina, that is the purple Swedish ivy veiner. It's a set of two. There's two sizes in it and it's a little stunner. Um, and for any of you guys that are listening um, that are waiting on your blackberry molds from Sugar Delights, they're en route. They should be with me on Wednesday and I'll have all the blackberry molds. That's the purple Swedish ivy. Beautiful little veiner. Really lovely veiner. Um, so as you know, I'm a stockist now for the Sugar Delights and they are in the air at the moment. They may well even be landing into Dublin as we talk. Okay. So that's those ones there. What I would normally do with them then is that I would just I'd make kind of bunches of three or five of these and I would just tape them into a stem. So you get this just really nice stem of them and um, tape them into odd numbers and you get this nice stem. So you can see they're plain veined and veined and left plain and veined and just scratch out the edges of it. So you get different finishes and it's amazing. Just a simple little um, finish how it kind of um, finishes off the leaf as well. All right. So let me just dust up some of those then for you. Let me tidy away. As you know, I always make and then dust and then tape. So I do it in a conveyor belt. Um, so where would you get the green work board? So the green boards are on my uh, website as well. Uh, amazing details. Can't wait for my shop. I've pretty much everything that I do is on the website, Susan, pretty much. Or as much as I physically can have at the moment. Okay, so let me, let me actually, just while, while you're there, the peony that I was talking about, so I'm doing a class at the moment. Now this is in its raw state, it's not finished. So this is the peony I've been making. Do you like? Not finished, not, I've colouring to do and everything on it at the minute. So I still have, and it's still a little bit wet. But that's the little, that's the little, um, uh, peony that I've been making so okay okay let me pull in so this is my dusting box that you know you all know now that I use so I've got all my leaves made or all my flowers and and leaves and everything all right and just push a couple of little bits and pieces out of the way so what I do is I always use a dusting uh, box as you know and then I um, can dust up the leaves or the flowers at least an awful lot easier in it alrighty so lime green always burgundy always and uh, let's go with the cerise pinky matches my shirt mango so a few, I've just a selection of colours there. We've got the Jinko, which is a little bit dark, but I blended with the lime green, so it's a nice a nice little colour on it. Uh, moss green, no. Ruby, let's put a bit of ruby. Ruby, ruby, ruby. Okay, so you can dust up your leaves. Um, let's start on green. So we've green. Uh, a little bit of lime green, which would be one of my most used, um, most used colours. Uh, so that can come up on the centre and I would also use it. So you can see it just lifts the, the leaf without a whole lot extra. You can do the centres of flowers. So you see you could do the outside, just the back, the back end of them there. You can also do 
sorry now, I don't want to keep crossing the camera on you. You can do <clears throat> the insides. So just a little bit there, a little tickle. Okay, you can on your buds, if you had a bud, just catch, this is all with the lime green. So you can just catch the bare little tip of it. You don't do, wouldn't do the whole thing, but you can just catch the bare little tip of it. You can do, I mean, with lime green, you can do pretty much any of your fresh. On these ones here, these are just the pressed leaves that I was talking about. So just up the centre, I'm not doing the full leaf. So it just gives you a little bit of interest on it. And you can come back, obviously, and you can overdust it and start to build up your layers uh, of dust as well on it. <clears throat> Let me go yellow. Mellow yellow. God, I'd never be a singer. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> That's a brutal voice. <laughs> Sometimes I sing when I'm on my own <laughs> and people are far, far away. So <laughs> a little bit of yellow. Let's just catch the edges of the petals with this. I forgot you were all there. <laughs> so you can just catch the edges. Not sure if you'll see that. Let me do that with the pink instead. So let's just catch the edges, catch the edges. Just the bare little tip. Okay. And you see how it just gives you a really nice little kind of delicate finish to it. The pink as well, you could use that just on the, normally what I do is I bleed it up maybe from the bottom, but not the whole way up the petal. So you'll create these kind of different shades and tones uh, and everything on. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Do I have the brand of colour used in your life, in your shop? Uh, I have some of them, Maureen. Yeah, I have some of them. <laughs> Jeanette, I'm glad I'm entertaining you. <laughs> Jeez, I don't, I, in, I've, the family of us, there's um, two singers in our family and the rest of us wouldn't be that wild now at singing. We wouldn't have what voices. <laughs> okay, <laughs> stop it. So just a little bit of dust in here and there, and then you can add in a little small bit of the green. So you start to bring a little bit of life. It just takes from the, the flat kind of look on it. Just pop these to the side and... We can come back to them um, <clears throat> the little gum nuts that I made. So all that I do on those ones is I will take just the darkest green or you can take like a brown or actually the burgundy would work. That would work on these as well. Um, so let me just tip it a wee bit out. I love this. Uh, I love this burgundy, but I do hate the pots. If Shelley is still watching, she's she's with me. So. Get your brush in, in, in to the centre and you see it just creates that little bit of depth down into the, the little buds. All right. So not much else going on on that one, bar maybe a small bit of the dark green just on the outside. And I do speed dust when I'm doing these in reality. So I'd normally have four or five of them in my hand and I've and just fly them off all right little bit of burgundy if you want just to catch that i hope these colors will show on the screen sometimes they're not because obviously i'm not in daylight either okay so that gives those a little point of interest there um the likes of the reds what you can do there is that you can take so this is ruby so remember the little red berries that we did and remember I was saying sometimes um, red flower paste colours, um, my own included, they're like a kind of cherry sort of, they're not a deep, deep red. So what you can do is just take your red and you can just skim a little bit of that over. And can you see the difference at all? So you should hopefully see the difference. It just gives it a little small bit more depth. And what we'll do is we'll just pop in a little bit of burgundy into the belly button. I'm sure there's probably a name on that little bit there, but I call it the belly button. Into the navel. Okay. All right. I don't know what you're talking about. Put it together in a pot. So that will give them just a small bit of depth of colour. 
All right, and pop that on there. These obviously you can glaze them and everything afterwards if you want to do that then as well. If you have the likes of these ones here, okay, so these were just the very first ones that I did. Now, normally, guys, I like to make these and then just leave them alone to dry. Um, so let's take these from a plain white and let's just add a bit of interest. So let's go for, this is Rose Campion, this one here, which is a delicious, delicious colour. So a little bit of dust on the brush. So you always work it onto the brush. You don't dip into the pot and go onto the flower because I tell you, you will look like. Let's just pull that on the edges. So I'm just kind of think of it that you're cleaning the brush on the edge of the petal and see. So it just gives it that little bit of interest there and it just kind of bleeds it down the petals a small little bit. Look at that. All right. OK. All right. And these guys here, let's do it up from the root. So I just want to show you the different kind of kind of different effects. So let's not go the whole way up. But if you just bleed that up on the root, what you need to think of as well is when these when when these are on um, um, a cake, you're not necessarily looking down into the flower. You're going to be looking at the sides and the edges and everything. So. You want just to create those little bits of interest there on it. Alrighty. I like the one with the stamen. It's very freesia, fuchsia kind of um, all that on it. And then these guys here. I did it in. Oh, yes. So, yeah, the burgundy. You took it out of this pot, Elfin, and put it into a bigger pot. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Now I get you. I'd be afraid I'd miss something. Do you know what I mean? Just wouldn't like to miss. So I'm just going to blend a little bit of the lime and a little bit of the, this is Jinko, Jinko Green. But look, you'll have whatever brands and whatever ones that you guys use as well. So let's come from the top down and just pull down a little small bit there as well. Okay, and it just creates points of interest on it. And let's just, a little bit of lime. And sometimes you might think, well, lime green, but it's already lime. But actually, it'll be tones or a few shades different and it'll create a little point of interest. And you can probably see, well, I hope you can see that it doesn't, um, uh, the pearl doesn't colour because they're glazed. So they're not going to colour for you. All right. So that gives you those points of interest. And then let me just find a couple more. So you really just play about with these. Obviously, if you're making a bunch of them, actually, I'll do this one here. So let's do a contrast color on this. So just with the brush side uh, on its side, I'm just going to catch these little petals here and there just to highlight, sort of highlight the petals and just give them a little bit of texture. So we don't want it too, too much. We can go with a small bit of yellow. So you can obviously blend colors. So then pull that over. Pull that over and this is just a little bit of texture, a little bit of colour and all on it. Alrighty. So you create those those different different textures and quite often if you're um, if you are making these for a wedding cake and you're trying to match a strong colour, um, purple is always the one that comes to my mind because, well, it's my favourite colour, but also because um, if you do all purple flowers on a cake, all you see is purple. So it gets very strong. Do you know what I mean? And they kind of, you don't see the cake, you see the flowers. So what I would tend to do is I'd use accents of the colour. So I might do the main feature flower as, a, a, let's say, an ivory rose or whatever it is. But then I would use purple in like the pulled flowers or the centres or the dusting or something like that. So it's enough that you can see the colour. I don't know if you'd agree with me, but it's enough that you can see the colour, but it just highlight or it's just accents of it. So it's not just in your face purple. You know, it's not just a huge amount of it there. And then these little guys here, I'm going to go yellow on these because he's like Johnny No Mates. There's nearly no yellow. So let's just, for this one here, into the centre and let's just very, very centre, like a little frangipani would be. 
So very center there on that. And then we can pull our lime green up along the back, just where that fresh growth would be. Okay, look perfect hydrangea head with a rare sea nature. Yep, these are what I call, guys, uh, any of these flowers that I make, and I call these Stratford, spe Stratford specials. So basically, they're f the, where I, I live in a place called Stratford. So these are flowers that are not botanically correct. They're Stratford specials. So you could have Dublin specials. You could have South Africa specials. You could have whatever. They're not botanically correct. They're special to your area. <laughs> Nobody else will have them. So that's what I call them. So let me just catch the edges of those guys again. All right. And then they can't say, well, it's not really whatever it's meant to be. It's not. It's a Stratford special. So just the outside and you can leave the inside bare. OK, so let me throw this aside. And always, as I say, what I do is I dust up or, or I make and then I dust because you end up with with the dust literally everywhere. Um, so you do want to just be certain that you clean down your board. So let's tape up a few of them. This one here I have taped up into the little spray. And what I would do is, oh, I just want to glaze this one here. I'm just going to do it off camera because I don't want to glaze on my board, on my uh, work board. Obviously, it'll ruin it. Um, so what I just use is a clear PME clear spray, clear glaze spray. OK, so you can obviously use whatever you want. Just going to give it a quick little choo choo. And that's not going to work because my spray has jammed. OK. Oh, wait. No, we've no spray. Whatever. The glaze is gone. OK, so um, I sure if I had time, I'd get a little pin. It's obviously just glazed over on it because I was using it last night. No, nope. sorry about that. No glaze. So imagine they're shiny. So they're your little berries. So let me just pull a few of them together. And spray or, or at least bouquet some of them. So what I will do is I'll just I would always leave these to dry before I start to tape them. So you can tape them all on the same height and then add them into your bouquet. If you want to do that, I would generally give them a small bit of a pull that they're just at different angles uh, as well. The likes of these ones and what I said at the start is where I make them on like green wires Um. It means you don't have to tape them up. If you do make them on white wires, you do need to tape each one. So that's why I use green wires for the likes of these, because it's all about speed. And if you're doing these for a commercial cake, then time is money. Time is money. So you if you have it on green wire, it's one job less. So to tape these up, sorry, I did those without thinking. So to tape these up, I place the tape onto the wire and it's at a 45 degree angle. I'm right handed, so I know that this looks left handed uh, on you guys, but I just twirl it in my right hand. So that's all I'm doing. OK. So I'll just tape the ones that match. So then you have your green stems because obviously they wouldn't be on white stems. And what I'll do is I'll just put a little bundle of those guys together. Normally what I do is I'd actually make um, some of these. So I would make bunches of threes or fives and then I'll add them into my my uh, arrangement. All right. So that's normally what I do there. OK, and in that lad. And then don't leave them all kind of tightly packed. You want to get a little bit of movement on it. So just open them out a little small bit. Bit like I did with the hydrangea, if anyone saw the hydrangea demo. So just a little bit like what I did there. Um, I I um, had the little bunch of flowers. I'm just adding a touch of colour just to those, just to lifen them up a little bit. So thanks, Ronnie. Hopefully you'll get down to the shop. I'll have an influx if you all come, lads. Now, don't be expecting tea and cake. There's never any cake in my house, but you're very welcome to come to the shop. <laughs> Let's do these ones here. Like what I was saying on the little stem of Frisia sort of style. So let me just pop those out of the way. And oh, we have a few of those. OK, so what I would do is I would take the smallest one first. 
put a bit of tape on that, come down about an inch, an inch and a half, add on my next one. Now, I know these are all not matchy matchy, but it will just give you an idea. Sometimes this tape just frays a bit. This one is doing exactly that. It's just tape down, come down about another inch, add on your next one. So you see we're starting to create a little, little fishing rod. And then you want to just pop them all up. So you see you create like a little stem of freesia. Now what you want is obviously you want them all the same flower on the stem, but you do want them in different sizes. You could add in a bud onto the end of it, you know, like it would be in the stages of the of the flower. So that's just a very simple little stem of them there. Um, the leaves then, what I do with those guys is an easy way to tape them up is if you... Take the smaller one, normally the rule of thumb, um, that's the truth, there's never any cake in my house, Sandra. Would I lie to you? <laughs> Genuinely there isn't, we had rich tea biscuits tonight, that was the extent of the cake in our house. So, stay, uh, tape down about an inch and a half, lay your next leaf then on top, so that the top of the leaf is about in the middle of the leaf ahead of it. Give that a turn, pull this down. Just to tighten that in and then you can open it out. So then you get your little stem there. Um, the gum nuts, I don't know. I, I have three. Look, let me just dust that lad. Uh, just get a bit of colour into him. Speed dusting over there at the side. The likes of the gum nuts then, I'll bunch those in kind of threes or fives or sevens. But a bunch of odd numbers. Okay, tape those guys down. And then you want to open them out so they create like a little, there's um there's another one there, it's like kangaroo paw, I think it's um like just a little, it's like a hand basically, it's like a little hand or something that they have on it so you can do the same style with those ones there. And then these ones, these little bell shaped ones, where's the other ones I made? Uh, oh, I have them already done, I'm ahead of myself. So these guys here, again, you can bunch them or you can step them down. So let's just step these down. If I was doing a very big bunch of these, I'd actually use a carrier wire in the in the set of it as well. Let's just pull that down tight and let's just add a new. So you start to create these little um, kind of legs, I always call them, but your legs of flowers. All right. So then they can go in if you have... Um, let me just pull one that's here. So let me come back to this is the David Austin we did last night. So what you can do then is you can then add those in to make this a bigger arrangement. So I'll just loosely place a few of them in. So you can add them in there. You can add in your little trailing guys. Do you know what I mean? Whatever you whatever way you want to add them into it. Um, this one here is my wild roses now i'm going to do a variation of these next week uh, for you so a nice kind of wild rose so again you can just pop in your bunches here and there what you want is you want to create texture and movement and different kind of styles and shapes and everything um so you can just pop all those in and your little leaves and everything into it um have to ask why are they called gum nuts no idea sandra i've no idea i just know that's what they're called um, so yes, yeah, so you can add in different, you see how the, how it makes a difference then to a spray if you've got an extra little bit. What I generally do when I'm trying to do a spray is that I'll usually have some berries, so my, or buds or berries, so they'll just be closed. I will have some little small open flowers, foliage obviously, and then my main flower. So I try and get a mixture of all those shapes and everything into it. And you can just tape all those guys in so that they add to it. And you see on the likes of this one where I have the dark pink on the edges of the petals and there is the pink on the flower as well on the rose. So one picks up the other. You can have your um, you can have your um, complementary colours. That's the word I'm trying to look for. See the way little bunches of those done in white, they'll work like a little small sort of a hydrangea. Actually, somebody asked earlier about lilac. So if you were doing um, lilac, you would make exactly the same flower that I did here, but only cut it in four. 
So there's only four petals. Most some lilac has five petals, but mostly it's four. So you just cut that in four, press out your petals. Um, and what you would actually do is you'd make a hook on your wire and you would dip the wire, the hook in glue and dip it into your yellow pollen and then put your flower onto it. So it would be yellow pollen in the centre of that. So that's the way you can do lilac, obviously in the purple or white, whatever you're doing there on it. So that gives you a kind of a selection of them. As I say, I'm doing a variation on this um, next week on a bramble rose is what I'm doing next week. And then hopefully you, some of you guys have taken up the challenge and you're going to make some of the um, buds and berries. Please, our buds and leaves. Uh, so hopefully you'll get to do those. Let me see any other questions. Thank you, Valentina. Uh, yeah, Wild Roses Manny will be doing those next week. Daffodils, I wonder. So you Googled. OK, uh, Elfin and Gumnut is a woody fruit of a eucalyptus tree. There you go. See? So that is those ones there. Uh, let me just spin you back up then. And we're good. How come I can never? <laughs> I just talk take so much of your time i'm so sorry okay someone's messaging me i'll get back to you sorry 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 so look that is it so hopefully you enjoyed that as i say this is the style that we're going to be doing next week so it's going to be a variation on this uh, so like just kind of briar roses we'll be doing on those and i'll be using the simple um a five petal cutter so that is me thank you all again for coming thanks very much hope you're all doing well and we'll see you next week hopefully some of us will have a little bit of a, a lockdown lifted um and i look forward to opening my shop mon tomorrow week on the 15th i'll be able to open it again thank you very much for your time again and stay safe and stay well guys take care Bye bye